Welcome to the All About TRH podcast, aka All About the Real Housewives, aka All About the Truth. On today's episode, we get into John Fuda's response to us sharing his criminal past and give our tea. And we talk Real Housewives of Orange County and our thoughts on the last few episodes. Hi, Chantel. Hey, Roxanne. So, Chantel, I didn't sleep last night. Yeah, you sent me, like, a wedding TikTok at, like, 3 in the morning. What happened? I know. Uh, yeah, wasn't that pretty, though? I haven't even looked at it. Oh, gosh. Okay, yeah. I, this, like, submarine thing that's happening. Oh, stop it. <laughs> no, I swear. Like, I don't know. I It's it's affected me. So, today was the last day where their oxygen was going to run out by 7 a.m. And, obviously, there was, like, a 1% chance that they were going to get out of there alive. So I, like, could not sleep. TikTok is, like, the death of people. It, it like, makes you so I don't have sad. that. I know, which is so crazy. But it just, like, makes you so depressed and sad. Like, I, I don't even know. So I was, like, so sad watching TikToks. And then I couldn't stop. And then, like, I, I was just thinking about it the whole time. And then, um, yeah, so I literally stayed up until, like, 530. Yeah, so why would you put something in your life like that to I know, make I know. that happen to you? I know my husband, I I feel like this has been such a distraction for me because like I am someone who has like a bunch of news app on my phone and my husband, like even for Lent, he's like, delete that, like give that up or whatever. And I feel like us doing this podcast, it has made us even a million times busier. So um, yeah, like I do notice I'm on Instagram way more and I hate it. Yeah. Ex- yeah. Like that is like, uh, yeah, I'm on social media so much, but at least I'm not like reading the news like I don't know things like I feel like I didn't even know about the submarine until like a little bit later which is shocking for me yeah no, so, for sure yeah so it's a little that. sus to me that's all I gotta say oh really you're one of yeah the, wow I'm shocked that you're like yeah. someone who would be like a conspiracist about this or whatever. <laughs> very shocking um usually that's me so I um, know yeah it just it's it's sad all around but yeah so I've been up and uh I've been waiting for this just kind of waiting Wow. I know. Um, uh, but, yeah, so today we're going to really talk about, so John Fuda, you know, Thirsty Fuda, he did go on a podcast recently, Bravo Bros. We like him, you guys, so just so you know. Yeah, um, it was so funny. Everyone was, com- everyone was like, tagging us in their videos. It's <laughs> just yeah. like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Because they- it was funny. We just came out the podcast with it, and then, you know, they got his side, which is good. You know, you want to hear the other side sometimes. Yeah, but- I think I think they heard, like, what we were putting out there, and they re- and they reached out to John Fuda, and Fuda was like, oh, perfect, like, bet, like, bet, bros, like, I'll, I'll talk, you know, and that's completely <laughs> that's fine so um yeah we were like really good with them even if they think like opposite as us so it's fine but I have and so we- we're gonna talk about that we're gonna talk about Orange County I'm gonna reveal a couple things but um I have not had a chance to actually listen to the episode um I doubt Chantel has and uh, uh it's just you know it's summer like in Michigan we don't get much good weather we get like three months of good weather and we work so like as soon as like we're done working you know outside of this like I like am with you know three little kids so I have not had a chance and I think it just came out recently and then Chantel has been working too so I I, Chantel you haven't had a chance right no no and usually I usually would listen to podcasts when I'm walking and I didn't even walk yesterday so oh wow okay yeah Yeah, I'm so surprised you didn't but I know I was uh, busy yeah okay well (laughs) luckily one of our listeners Ricardo hey Ricardo he sent me a recap yeah and he sent me a recap of the entire thing. I told him, I was like, you don't have to do that because like you guys always like will report things back to me. And so he's like, no, I want, I want to like, I'm going to listen. It's fine. So he sent me a whole recap of what John said, because obviously we're the ones who put out that he does have this like criminal background. And here he was like calling Louis um, a con artist and all this stuff. So we were like, really? Like if you have a background, you're not going to talk about someone else like that. And what I said too, be- like I saw a clip of their podcast and it's just like, he was making it seem like, no, like, but it's like, just, why can't you just 100% own it? You, he did say something like I was an adolescent back then. Like I did get into some, some small things, but it's like, no, just hundred percent own it. You were young back in the day. You messed up. You had a weird, you know, 
ex-girlfriend that got you into so much more trouble. You change your last name and no, that's it. No, I don't it. think he had a weird ex-girlfriend, okay? And um and and he he like was a girlfriend, a girlfriend that like, you know, maybe they cause each other, you know, more yeah, like trouble both, and pain. Like they both, they yeah, both they both yeah. have a part in this. So. Yeah, for sure. So it's like just own it and like let's move on. It's okay. Everyone has a pass right. and we're all okay with that. And we have no mm-hmm. problem. Like yeah. I don't care if you even were in some sort of like you went to jail for a few weeks, but just come out and just stay in and then we'll move on. And then don't point your fingers at other people. That's it. Right. And so he, he like got charged with a felony back in 2008. So he would have been probably like 20 years old. So it's not like he was like a minor or anything. And, you know, he says he doesn't need to hide anything, but like, you know, our sources tell us like, you know, that was expunged and he spent a lot of money to expunge that. Um, so there's that. It seems like to me, him and his girlfriend, um, they were together for a while, like created bad habits for each other, like we were saying. And, you know, I got in contact with someone who was one of his guy friends that was also involved in this that didn't get the felony expunged. Um, so I, I know a lot and I'm, I want to be careful here because the thing is, he has this ex who's in a halfway house. Um, and we know a lot. And she's talked to the Sun Media. They reached out. See, the Sun Media reached out to her. And we actually put this out there. And it's so funny how no one picked this. Like, I feel like no one really picked it up. Because it's, like, all about narrative at the time. So, um, uh, Brittany, the ex, reaches out to the person who reached out to her from the Sun Media and says, like, by the way, like, how did you get in contact with me? And the um, editor responds and says, like, it wasn't through Louis. There was, like, no affiliation with Louis. It's all on email. We put it out there. But um, she said, media has access to a portal. We look up people. And you were found as a relative acquaintance of John. And then court documents confirmed. It wasn't Louis. That's how we found you. That's how we contacted you. So we put that out there. And that's the Sun Media who said that. Uh, so that, you know, vindicates Louis. Um, so, of course, he doesn't really address this, but he uh, does address like a couple of things. But I want to I want to say the right thing. So I know a lot. OK, speaking to this friend, speaking to other things. John doesn't want that out there and he doesn't want that out there because he has now called attorneys and is threatening his ex um his ex the baby mama he's threatening her like you'll stay in jail longer if you keep talking and I don't want to jeopardize I know she has you know he's the one who dragged her into all of this okay so he dragged her into all of this by like making her a storyline and by Rachel kind of talking very poorly of her when your husband has probably the exact same past and just you know he kind of got out of it which is great that he got out of it so I do know a lot a shocking, very, very shocking things. And I don't want to jeopardize anything, but it sounds like, you know, he is worried and he acted like he wasn't on that podcast from the notes that I read. He is worried. And if he wasn't worried, he wouldn't have attorneys blowing up his ex trying to silence her. Okay. Um, so, you know, talk to her, talk to the friend, um, also talk to other people who talk to her. And it is, it, it is bad, you guys. It really, really is. And I don't want to jeopardize again, so I'm not going to say what we know, but we have that information. And you wouldn't sit there and try to silence your ex, try, you know, get attorneys involved. It's all a very expensive process. And this is someone who's been clean um, for a couple years now and, you know, wants to change her life, wants to get out. So I don't want to, like, jeopardize that. But that's sus packed, right? Like, if you don't have anything to hide, if you didn't change your last name because of this, if you were a minor during this, like, you're not going to go ahead and, you know, see that shit. She's now talking to other people. Like, I need to silence her ASAP. 
And, like, to me, the street doesn't lie. And, like, when I see the streets, like, the people you grew up with, people that knew you back in the day, like, people right. are going to know things and they're going to come out. Be just like how any, anybody in your hometown, your city, they know stuff and they're going to say things, especially if you come on a platform. And that's that's why, it's, to me, it's like if you have something to hide, own it, own it or don't come on. Like, you, I, yeah. I just don't understand. It's like Real Housewives has been on for over, for like, 15 years. And it's like, who cares? And I also think it's silly that people are saying, oh, well, she she's a criminal. Like, she's not going to be honest because, I mean, John Food at the end of the day is a criminal. Why are we believing him? Yes, he got his felony expunged, but why are we believing him? He was still charged with that. And I and I think that, and I, I don't think that's accurate. Like, I, I do think people and mess she's a, up. She's a criminal. She's a criminal for, like, doing drugs whatever drugs it's not like she's sitting there like psychopath like you know manipulator like doing all these weird things and like went to yeah. court 95 times like it's like she's doing drugs that doesn't just because you're doing drugs doesn't make yeah. you a liar right so and I, and and she's clean though right now she's been in jail for a couple years then a halfway house so like she's clean so it, she has a clear mind and i mean he's clean so you know i hope he's clean and uh, you know if he says something i'm gonna hear his side too i'm not gonna just dismiss it and be like he's a he was charged with a felony but he got it expunged and now i'm not gonna believe him like no, yeah I'm here all sides like that's so silly to me so people say like oh why would we believe her like she you know abandoned the child or she's a criminal and it's like he has like a very supportive family again we've heard really good things about his mom so he has a supportive family who helped who took care of Jaden growing up when rachel wasn't involved in the picture so, um, yeah, there's a lot, but I want to, I want to kind of like touch on what Ricardo sent us. Um, now they talk about, you know, um, that the show was never a dream of theirs. And I don't think it was a dream of theirs. I feel like with Danielle, it was more a dream of hers, but yeah. I think that they definitely tried to, you know, they were very excited about getting on the show. Um, he says that Rachel watched the show before COVID, um, but he, he said he's more into movies about drugs. Oh my God. <laughs> that doesn't help your case, good boy. <laughs> oh my. Okay. You know that. No, oh my. Anyways. Um, he said that him and his wife bonded over Bravo and Shark Tank. Um, he says that obviously he's closest to Joe and, you know, they talk about Louie and he says that Louie buried himself and he calls Louie crazy. He says that this, the first month and a half of filming, they were cordial. And it's like, Fuda, Louie was never thinking of you. I just want you to know this. Like, he was never thinking of you. I don't think anybody was thinking of you. Like, you wanted a problem because you had princess in your ear and that's completely fine. But he was never thinking of you. Like, you had a problem with yourself. Literally, so, and you're a newbie. Like, why are you trying to come on and like start problems with the other guys? Like, you guys are you guys are barely on for five minutes an episode. Yeah, he's like princess number two. <sighs> I know. So uh, they asked, like, you know, how he found out uh, about them contacting his ex. He says he never said that, but he investigated him and his wife. He knows that. He says he's friends, uh, and a report was done, and he says who filled it out, and that. Um, this has made his ex realize there's something in it for her. And he hasn't seen the ex since 2015. Only Facebook messaged him in 2020 during COVID to see how Jaden was. And he kept it brief, but he knows this was all part of the smear campaign. Again, but like, the media okay. has declined this. And then it. also, didn't you guys just um, try to file for adoption papers? And then that girl told you that she's going to get contacted. That didn't spark anything for her. Right. Yeah. And he, there was no smear campaign against them. No one even was talking about John Fuda. Like, I am so scared that you guys think you're that important. Yeah. Uh, what you, The reunion is what made everyone start talking right. about you guys. It's like, so stupid. After the fact. He says, um, John says that Louis had no right or was in any position to say that his wife is doing a good job as a mother. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. What does that even mean? I mean, I know. your wife is getting complimented. She she does have a right because she's putting this on TV or Louie does have a right. She's putting this on TV. So he's saying you are a good mother. Like all the BS should be put aside when it comes to that stuff and just be like, man up. I mean, he's obviously he's 35 years old. He's very, very immature. They say one time I Googled it, that it takes like a guy until they're like 43 to be mature or something. <laughs> right. I swear. So he's very, very immature. Like if someone was complimenting a woman for being, you know, a good mother, that's the best compliment anyone can get. 
So just accept it and be a man. But yeah, reg- regardless of where man. you think that's the intention is coming from, it's a great compliment, and, like, that's it. Move on. Yeah. John says that Louis came into the season finale party ready to go, and strangely, he says Louis said hi to him twice that night, and it's like, okay, what? What does If someone says hi twice, does that mean they want to fight you? Yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> uh, John says Louis pointed at New York that night and said, I will teach you how to make real money, and John said that was the best line of the night. Uh, and then they asked, like, what was in the envelope? John says production and the network know what's in there and uh, as it was filmed. And uh, stay tuned on how they choose to reveal it and if they'll release it. And it's like, okay, then if there was something that was valid, Bravo would absolutely put it out there and release it. You didn't even open the envelope. So you brought an envelope, a Manila, to the reunion. You chose not to open it. It wasn't Bravo. It wasn't anything. You just you know, threw it around like there was something in there. If you had something and people are calling you out, like what's in there, you're going to put it out. Or are you waiting for your next storyline? Like this is dead. This is over with. The media just confirmed that's absolutely not how we got your contact information. So it is what it is. I even did a quick search on how you can pull up Brittany's information. And like, period, you're talking about this person. You're talking about this ex. You're, you're, you're talking poorly of her. People, the media are going to now contact her and try to get her side because people want to hear it. It has nothing to do with Louie. You guys are so irrelevant. Uh, John says that it's not the right place to bring up what was in the envelope. And it's like, okay. Uh, He avoids the question whose idea it was to bring the envelope. But it's very important to note that all of them met up, except Frank Catania. I don't think he met up the day before. But all of them met up. So Margaret... Margaret's like husband whatever his name is and then (laughs) Melissa princess and then Bravo lovers family they all met up one day got together and they did this and they were they were smart about it because the whole season was deflected and it was just kind of about the smear campaign that didn't happen until the reunion aired yeah I guess it was it was good for them for to not go back but like it was so clear and so obvious that that they they it was like something that they wanted to do like it was was like planned rehearsed and planned yeah so they asked if like he adopted for a storyline and he said and he said he married in 2017. Good questions, guys. Yeah, he married in 2017. He built a house, then uh COVID happened, he couldn't really adopt then. Then when things calmed down, um the first attorney said it wasn't worth it, second attorney he didn't like, third attorney said it would be an easy process and it was. But that's not what Rachel said happened on the show. Yeah. So she I'm- just said that they've tried. Yeah, I don't know why, but, like, conveniently the third time around. I mean, listen, like, we we saw Jaden say, you know, I want you to adopt me. So, Jaden's saying that, then, like, we're going to go with what, this, what, what he says. I'm not going to take that away from Rachel. So, it is what it is. I do think it was still for a storyline. But, I mean, it's clear, like, he did want to be adopted. He said it. So, whatever. And he said he's been wanting to. So, it was like, okay, if you would have sensed that. So, you should have done it 10 years ago. Um, people come up with his name change now. He says he got married in 2017, decided to keep his last name as his middle name. He was brought up by the Fuda family and thought he was a Fuda until fourth grade, but he waited until he was older and could it could afford to change his name. Uh, but, and then, and then he like brings up like, you know, he, he no, has that's it weird. As, yeah, he has it as his middle name. So why would he keep it as his middle name? No one cares what your middle name is. Like, show us your license. We don't, like, look you up by your middle name. Like, you still change your name. So it's freaking weird. You changed it when you were, like, 30 years old. It's weird. No, so it's weird. Sorry. It's very weird. It's not a good reason. No one just changes their name because you respect somebody or you want to do it. No. Yeah. Even if you thought you were a Fuda since fourth grade. And if you do do that... You do it like when you're 18 years old. It, it, it's it's like in a very it's a very annoying process to change your name. Okay, so you're not gonna go out of your way to change that without motive. I don't know. Yeah. Um, John says that the report that we posted was cropped to not show the last two sentences to say it was dismissed. And uh, someone on Twitter had sent us that we actually do have the criminal like actual case thing that we put out there, uh, but we didn't like highlight that, and it was expunged. Okay. Uh, and it, it took a lot of money from the foodas. Yeah, but just because it's expunged does not mean that you didn't do the crime. Like, 
uh, we, like there's a lot that just got passed in Michigan about DUIs. And if you haven't had a DUI in like seven years, but you had one, you can get it expunged. So now you have to go to a lawyer and get it expunged, but you still got the DUI. You still drove right, drunk. Exactly. Like, that doesn't mean that you didn't do the crime. Thank you. And that's what he's like trying to prove. And it's like, yeah. you're still technically a criminal. You just got it expunged. Yeah. That's it. Or it doesn't mean that you didn't do those things that you were going to get, um, yeah. whatever, get in trouble for. I don't know. Ricardo said that it was a it was a joke and one hour of his a waste of his time. So oh, wow. thank you, Ricardo. For... <laughs> but you guys go listen to the yeah. Um, go I mean, thank, you, thank you, Ricardo, for recapping. <laughs> we appreciate it so much, and that was very helpful. But there's a lot more, and I do think that it is going to come out, and we're going to kind of hold off. We're going to hold on to the information, like John Food is holding on to that envelope that's sealed and that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna hold on to it right now thank you we're gonna hold on to it for now we don't want to take it to the next step we don't want someone who's like trying to get you know who's gotten clean and wants to change her life to be scared of these tactics from john john wouldn't have attorneys doing this if he wasn't scared and again it's like if you just if you have a past then shut your mouth and stop calling someone a con artist when you clearly you know are the con artist and trying to get things hidden uh, again, I feel like I feel like you know we would probably like John and Rachel. I don't know, maybe we wouldn't. I don't know. Um, but actually, I really hated her confessionals and how she. Yeah, acted regardless above of it. anything that happened between him and like what happened to the reunion and him being like just like this phony person and coming after Louie and like all these things, like I think we just didn't even like how she came yeah. off. But we did say like there is there is time for redemption season. Yeah, like, she can exactly. come back so second people, season. Yeah, yeah, and like just be great and we'll be like okay whatever we like her now like you we change so much sometimes season to season and and who we like so oh, it could all always. depend exactly so yeah i feel like that's i mean is there anything else that you want to cover with new jersey or anything no updates no. you guys no updates no updates. yeah so. i think we just need to leave it alone and like let it rest out like how th- they're meaning it for it too yeah that's what they so- want yeah, so like, so we can come back, unless something crazy happens. Of course, we're gonna talk about it, but then like, well, let's just you know go into the next filming season and seeing seeing really what happens. Yeah, and we'll obviously come back once we hear contracts are out and things like that too. Yeah, any updates? We'll still talk about it. So that's all for now. We're not gonna like harp on like little things. Yeah, uh, and uh, yes, I'm not going to say anything else right now. And that's that. So uh, let's get into Orange County, Chantel. Oh, see, baby. Uh, Wait, what are we thinking? Um, I- one, real quick though are we gonna watch crappy lake it comes out i think july like 9th or something it's so weird everyone's obsessed with new york and i would i never got into new york i mean i would watch it and i would just be like bored it's so weird you didn't like like sonia and um Luan? Luan. um i don't know to be determined let us know okay, you let's guys see. should we watch yeah. that that and the new ronies coming out which i do think we need to watch i do want to like... watch the new okay Roni. i actually think it looks good so i'm yeah, excited same. for it they someone they compared it to like miami um oh good pro- production team compared it to the new miami and i'm like whoa that's saying a lot because miami is top tier um franchise right now wait so. miami still hasn't even aired on bravo which is really weird like the, the old season? The the most recent season. Oh, wow. No way. Right? What are they waiting for? Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, but Miami is, Miami is top tier, so go watch Miami. But yeah. <laughs> let's talk Orange County. Yeah, let's talk Orange, Orange County. So for me, um, just so we can kind of – Gina and Emily were new to me. So, like, recently I went back, like, last, last two weeks to watch, like, the season they came on. Um, And why are they still here? Right. That's what I – but you know what? It's like, that's how I felt the last two episodes. I will say though, uh, or last two seasons, or I will say though, like watching so far this season, Gina is very annoying to me and I'm actually liking Emily. I do like Emily. Okay, we'll get into it. I just want to know like how they're still here. Cause like I, know. I watched the the um season, the last season of Vicky and then like it's been three, four years and then they're still on the show and I'm shocked. I'm so shocked. But... The last like seasons have been terrible and I really am surprised that Bravo did keep both of them. But I will say like, I am like happy with how Emily is this season and again I'm not feeling Gina at all her whole life her like boring boyfriend or whatever he is no no interest yeah not I, I think it. she needs to get out but yeah, yeah let's talk let's talk ratings because like obviously this was such like a big thing that Tamara's back um and she she pulled the ratings in they got a million and 32,000 viewers on the first episode 
which was which is a big deal for However, Bravo. However, it's convenient. So what Bravo did was they did the smartest thing ever. It was oh right yeah, after, it was right after the Vanderpump Rules Part Three reunion. So yeah. So they strategically <laughs> put Orange County immediately after that, knowing that Part Three was the most anticipated one to watch, and then they put Vander. Um, Orange County right after that. So people were on Bravo already. So it obviously smart. didn't take, uh, it obviously didn't get a million episode two, but it didn't do anything poorly. I think it was like yeah. around 700. Yeah. It was 788,000 for, which is still great. Percent. Yeah. Which is still good because their, their last season was like always bomb. dipping in this bomb. Yeah. Like but you bomb. know what? People still watch. Like when I will look back at it, it was like, you know, 600, 700s. Like it was still in the 700s, but yeah, it was, it never got like a, t- like usually throughout the seasons, like, you know, when there's like a climax or reunions, they'll get up to the million. And like that one never got even close to the million. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we start the season with, you know, Tamra, the huge preview, which like, how do you feel that she's back? So I think she is so excited and she's ready. She literally like went into depression when she left the show. But she wasn't gone that long. Like the way they act is like this bitch is gone for 10 years and she's back. Like wasn't she gone for only like two and a half years, like two seasons? But this was her, this is her light. I know. She, like this is everything to her. She's one of those. So, and she, you know, she was like an OG. So it was a big freaking deal. I mean, I would feel good because like the show bombed after she left, after she and Vicky left but yeah I I, how I feel with her coming back I feel like when it comes to her and Shannon I do think it's valid that she's upset with Shannon because like she felt like when she left the show that Shannon really like was probably more distant with her and then you know she started going to the media and Shannon I feel like probably thought she's doing this because she wants to get back on the show so she wants to use me as like a storyline so Bravo brings her back and I'm not going to give her any play which is messed up because like you guys are best friends yeah no I totally feel that way we'll talk more about like Tamara and Shannon for sure um well no actually we'll talk about it now because you know to me what it feels like to me is like Tamara sometimes has these things with her friendships that it's the same thing with Vicky it's like she's so close to them she's so she's such best friends with them but then all of a sudden she's like she can't even look at them it's like she got this falling out with them and it's like so quick for her to do that with a lot of her friends and I just don't get it she's a terrible friend like she she can throw her like best friend under the bus real quick like she is a flip-flopper she switches all the time to me it's like she has such a hard time picking the right friend or she goes the opposite side of talking shit about them and then wherever it fits her narrative and it's like so confusing to watch her go and navigate her friendships because I'm just like hello like I I don't I just don't understand her sometimes yeah I think that Shannon was kind of like relieved and was like haha Tamara you're not the shit like you think you are when Tamara left I will say that yeah (laughs) that's how I feel about it um I guess we'll talk about like we're gonna talk the first two episodes a little bit just of what has happened but um what do you think about Heather and like her kids going to college like I think this is like she's so she's the funniest person to me so I think she's the bougiest and funniest person so how do you feel about it Really? I don't, like, think anything of it. Because the way she's talking about, like, she, Roxanne, she was custom making her kids' dorm rooms. Like, I've never heard of this. Like, she was picking out the the layout. What college she, are they going to? Right. She's so extra, but, like, I guess when you have that much money, what else are you going to do with it? Then do stuff like that. I think that's probably not the way to do things. But, again, I'm not in that situation for me to be like, oh, like, if I had all that money, would I do that? I, mean, I kind I of I love would. it though, watching oh, okay. it because this is what we love to watch. It's like things that are not like right, like whatsoever. We wouldn't do it. Yeah, like this will never happen to my kids unless, like, you know, I get I win a million dollars or I, I hit the lottery. But like, it's crazy. She has like a team like doing these things in this like room to make sure her. It was it was nuts. Like watching that, I was like, you know, you guys are the only ones. Like I really don't know anybody that even does that. I know even like celebrities and their kids, like they like remain low key and don't want to you know, stick out like a sore thumb or something. Yeah. Do you think that she has raised a great family? Uh, yeah, I think her kids love her. And yeah. I think, you know, her kids, yeah, they like love her. And so, yeah, they, they're unique and they love her. So they, they love their parents. And I mean, if your parents feel love, if you feel like your parents love you, then I think you did something right. Yeah. I feel like they've 
they all respect each other. And like, it's really cute watching them, you know, time and time coming back to dinner, having a conversation. Like, it seems like they're very, they're a very open family, which is nice and refreshing to see. Heather is a good mom. Like, you know, and she did a lot of this, like on her own, you know, I'm sure she had help. Uh, I I think if anyone has four kids and they have a lot of money, like they're going to have help. And especially when the husband is like constantly working and we saw in the past that he was always working and that was like an issue for her. And she was trying to navigate and figure it out figure it all out and I think that people forget but like especially me living in that world now with my kids being so young it's a lot of work so it is a lot of work and I think that she you know always tried to do the like best thing for her kids and she was present um so I didn't watch like last season because she came back on last season correct yeah you you should have watched it I think it was two seasons ago she came back because you should have watched it because like she was so hard on Shannon Okay, so, like, what's her relationship with Gina? Because, like, then we get into this season and we see that, like, you know, Heather's crying and saying Gina's ghosting her. So, like, how do we feel about that? Like, I never knew their friendship, so I don't really understand it. It was weird. They had, like, this weird relationship where Gina and her became close and, you know, like, Gina made it like Shannon was, like, jealous. And I do think it would be hard to be friends with Heather. Like, I would, especially, like, Gina. Gina, like, is, like, one of us, right? Gina is um, Danielle from New Jersey because the, they're both Staten Island girls. They literally sound the same. Every time I'm watching her, I'm like, this is fucking Danielle. No, Gina's not like, I, I know like, you know, Danielle's thirsty and we got to give her credit for like, wa- you know, she wanted this. She got on it. Cool. But Gina's, I don't think Gina's like No, that. no. I'm talking about their voice. Like their voice right. is literally yeah, the I mean, yeah, Because it's Staten Island. Island. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I actually find Gina's voice like way more annoying, I will say. But <laughs> like, she's always like, you guys, like, I don't even know. But uh, I feel like Gina, she is, I feel like we're even more extra than like a Gina. And I feel like Gina, obviously, like, she doesn't feel judged by an Emily. And Emily, like, will support her. And I feel like she feels judged by a Heather. And I don't blame her because I feel like Heather's always talking about the finer things in life that you would feel like uncomfortable to invite her to certain things. But it is just weird because Gina was like all about Heather last season. And then all of a sudden this season, she's not about her. And so I just feel like Gina might be saying, okay, what can I do? Like, cause even on episode three, Gina like goes in and she like goes in on Jen. And I just feel like Gina is trying to stir the pot to, you know, Gina needs this. Like she, her boyfriend is like the average, like, and there's nothing wrong with it, but you know, she needs this. She has a family, she has kids. So this is a good paycheck for her. So I don't know. I feel like her ghosting Heather is like kind of weird. Okay, so you're saying it's, like, more for maybe a storyline and she needs to, you know, secure her paycheck. Yeah, maybe. Got I it. don't know. That's what I'm okay. thinking. Because yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was like, what the heck? Because they don't even seem – I mean, I know Heather likes, like, fun girls. I don't know. They're, that friendship seemed weir- weird to me for sure. Yeah. I know. It was. It, was, it felt forced. Yeah. So what do you think about – you said Jen. So what do you think about the new girl, Jen? So I was saying, like, I, I I do actually like her. I hate – okay, also about the Gina thing, because I remember Gina in the earlier seasons. So I like her. So she obviously – she had an affair. Uh, they, she had, like – But five- why is she, like, trying to lie about it? I just don't understand that. But why is Tamara, like, putting it on blast, though? Because that's fucking Tamara. Like, exactly. What? Hello, Tamara. This is Tamara, dude. Like, Tamara's she's like, so, like... Tamara's like, tell the truth. Tell the yeah, truth. Like, and it's like, Tamara's shut up. the Give worst. Her a fucking per- second. Tamara's the worst person to ever know you from your past. Like, if right. Tamara and John Fudo were, you know, back in high school, oh, my God. Like, she is the worst person to never know oh, anything about you. Oh, she'll put all that out there. Yeah. And it's like, dude, this girl, like, had a membership at your gym for years supporting you. Like, really? You're about to be like, tell the truth. Like, who are you? Let me tell what I want to tell. And, uh, um, I, I, it's so annoying to me because I feel like they've been casting people who have like these like dysfunctional relationships. And I, I liked seeing the family, you know, the she family has a dynamic. great family. Like she, what it seems like she has such like a great, um, she family does. That she's, she, yeah. That she's she does. Done. But like, you know, the cheating thing and, and I'll talk about Gina with this, but I will say like the, the son and the five-year-old and the foster care, like that did, you know, strike a chord for me and was like wow like she really is like a good person for doing that because I mean like she's done with all her kids and then she adopts this little kid and um I just thought that was so sweet and that she's a really really great mom who's her like boyfriend because it's like for him to accept all that is like a you know that takes someone that's a lot or it takes someone that you know is just like riding her back so it's like 
but these he has guys, his own these, kids oh okay i was gonna say these guys scare me a little bit no i mean jen's hot like she looks good he so it's like okay well she and he has his own family and you know he yeah like i'm saying kids. he's gaining way more by being with jen than like she would with him yeah uh, it's what I, i'm assu- i'm assuming i don't know anything i don't know about i don't him. i yeah. don't see it like that at all i just like i really do like her story with the son i will say i really really do like that so i, I like that she did that and um i respect that and i feel like the affair thing is being made into a big deal when it's like gina when gina first came on the show and she was like talking about divorce she's like we're good we're like so good like i love him like i still like bang him and like we're so good and it wasn't until later that we found out like maybe he would cheat on her and whatever but <gasps> it's like he, he's the one that cheated on her really gina yeah yeah like she but it, oh my god because you guys i just finished i just finished this like season and i'm like the way that she was talking about her you know her marriage and her divorce i was like you're gonna get eaten up alive like something's for sure gonna happen that you keep you know making it seem like it's one way and it's definitely not and i was just like i was waiting for it to drop but like this season we're watching now i couldn't like it never was made it apparent like you couldn't tell what happened but they were already like getting a divorce and like yeah i know that they were trying to figure it out but they were getting a divorce it was never you were like always like talking about how well they're really how well your relationship with him was and that it was whatever so it's like you keep acting like you're so triggered by this and it's like okay get over it like you're in a new relationship you're in a not in a new relationship you've been in a relationship for a long time so i'm like get over it yeah no i agree um i guess when we get on the boat okay taylor comes and this kind of goes to our next one like do you think taylor's Taylor came on the show because something's happening in her life or you think she's in a good spot in her life. And she's like, you know what? Let me just, this is fun. I miss it. What do you, what do you, what yeah, do you feel I about think Taylor? She's in a good spot in her life. And I think that she just wanted to come on the show. I think she's in a really good spot and I'm happy to see her. I like that. I like OGs. Like I want to see what's been going on with them. I like them. When these type of people signed up for the show, they did not know what to expect. They weren't trying to be famous. It was all fun for them. Like they were trying to do things with their, you know, this is a show about them and their girlfriends and it was fun and uh, those are like the authentic ones who weren't like necessarily trying to be famous now did they take advantage sometimes and like do things with like businesses and it's like yeah they did and, and whatever like that's okay but uh, I like seeing like an OG on there. And as far as like the boat thing, it really, you know, I, I did think like, let's go into like the whole Jen thing when Jenna starts opening up about her, you know, how she adopted this, this child who like didn't want to leave foster care. And, uh, and then Shannon was like, is that John's son? And Shannon does do stuff like this a lot. I really did think it was the rudest thing ever. But I also Dude. feel like Heather Dubrow has those tendencies too. Oh, where, she's the worst. Like, yeah. I don't know how they all, they all like to interrupt. And like, who, first of all, Shannon, who the hell cares if that's John's son? How about you text him after the bow and be like, haha, I saw you on the lake. Like, why are you screaming it? Or just like, or, or even say like, uh, wait, uh, Jen, can you just, I, I'm like, I want to listen to this story, but can you just give a, a second? Like, I think that's John's son. Let me just see. Okay. Anyway, so go on because that's, you know, such a crazy, beautiful thing that you did and whatever. And like, she didn't do any of that. But it's very scary how like, they don't even have the forefront to really realize that they just did that. Like, how do you not realize that you interrupted yeah, somebody? Yeah, why are these women not self-aware? I guess that's yeah. why they make such good TV, that they're not self-aware and that she wouldn't realize, like, how freaking rude that is when Jen is opening up about, you know, her son. So I just, like, I don't know. I I really do feel like I'm going to like Jen, by the way. Me too. I think I'm going to like Jen. I, she kind of does look like Tamara a little bit. So, like, every time they're on the screen together, I'm like, whoa, they, they like, it's the blonde, their shape, like, everything about them, their hair, I don't know, everything. Yeah, and they kind of look alike. I do think she's a good mom. She's, like, a present mom. She was, like, a stay-at-home mom. And I feel like she was, she's very involved with her kids, so... Um, so like back on the boat scene though, because when Tamara and Shannon start going at it and like Tamara's clearly drunk out of her mind and she's being crazy. Um, did you, did you realize like they were so taken aback by like the drama she's bringing? Because I think they're not used to it in the show. But they all know, no. I I, like they all, they're like, all right, well here she is. uh, Oh, like, yeah. yeah, Heather's face for sure did that. Like Heather was just like sitting back like, okay, this is Tamara. Like she's ready to go. Right, like she's ready to go. She needs to make a name for herself because she never wants that to happen again where she gets, you know kicked out of the show so she wants to liven things up because oc has been pretty shitty so it's like you got to give Tamara credit because she she wants to go this whole like shannon and her thing is like annoying and whatever uh but again like it's like weird because i 
I don't like Tamara and I can understand why Tamara was upset with Shannon. And I do think that I like Shannon, but I do think that she's not self-aware. Like last season, or was it the season before? Like I hated how Heather was with Shannon and I felt so bad for her. But then it's like, I know anytime Shannon meets a new girl, if you go back and look, she's always like pretty disrespectful to them and it takes her a second to warm up to them. And this is like prime example of it. Yeah, no, why is she like that? It's really, it's really bad. Like she needs to go see a therapist about that or a something. A self-awareness, because... like coach? I don't know. Yeah. I don't she... know because why, why do new people threaten you? It does seem like it will, it does seem like, you know, Taylor coming in, like Taylor's obviously going to be obsessed with the OGs. Like she's going to be up Tamara. She's going to be on Tamara. She right away was like trying to cling to Heather. Like she seems like that type of person. Well, she knows um, them. They went to Ultimate Girls Trip and then she knows Heather. So like, I can see why she's like that. And why she feels most comfortable with them. Is she a friend of the housewives or she's on? She's a friend of the housewives. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Heather Dubrow, like, I do feel like with Emily, like, you know, em- Emily did make a good point where every time she like talks about herself, like Heather won't even let her answer the question and just like, we'll talk about her kids and her experience. And like, that can be very annoying for someone. Yeah. I feel bad because we barely talked about Emily, but she does bring in a lot when she, like, she's in the group settings. Like she does bring she does bring it like I feel like in, not in a bad way but not even in, like she just is there and she like makes it make sense like so I yeah, think no, she's I'm needed on the show Emily yeah this season a lot so I I'm liking it a lot I I think yeah she's like Gina is to me being extra and doing things that are like like Emily even said out of her character kind of and I think she's doing that to bring like the wow factor yeah it was savage for her bringing it up so it's like yeah tell her the next time i feel like you know gina probably doesn't want to focus on her relationship with her boyfriend so this is like her way of like deflecting is you know bringing up stuff because they all go and they you know obviously tamra loses her business and she's like you know distraught over it of course she is and jen i guess the day before posted tiktok of like oh how our business is stu- still doing well and gina is making it a thing which i i get why that would be looked at as a thing where it'd be like why would you do that conveniently one day before tamara you know is like closing her business and it's like a hard time for them or whatever but Heather says, like, don't bring it up here. And Gina's still like, no, I'm going to bring it up here. So I feel like <laughs> Gina's taking t- notes from what Tamara does. And she's doing it. But I'm actually happy that they did because right away it was squash. Whereas in, it could lead up to, like, a 10 freaking um, episode storyline. Yeah, no, I agree. And the thing, the, the funny thing is, too, speaking about cut, like, um, Eddie, yeah. Eddie and them lose cut, okay? And then they're making a scene. She's like, I don't know what Eddie's going to do. It's like, okay, if you love to train, you can still train, my dude. You can still train anybody on the street. Go to any gym yeah, be and a train. trainer, exactly. Or just be exactly. a trainer. Like, sell yourself. Like, you have the following. Sell yourself and yeah. be a trainer. I charge 130 an hour, whatever the heck you want to charge, and then call it a day. But it's still his baby and, like, what he's been doing every day. He's so passionate about it. So, of course, like, they've spent so much time, money, and, you know, I'm sure it's, like, a loss for them at the end of the day financially as well. So, thank God that Tamara's back on the show. Yeah. <laughs> Helped her out. Mm-hmm. What else, well, yeah, like, happened? I know. No, I that's... Like- I don't That's know all what I had. I'm about it, I do feel like I am liking Jen, and I'm happy that I'm liking Jen because I feel like every new person that they brought to OC has been bad, and uh, I don't know. And I like that she has like this unique again, like it's relatable, like with the mom and whatever. And uh, I, I, really I think there's like potential that. for this season, but I also think more than anything, it's going to help the next season. Like it's going to bring it all back and then maybe they can help really recast people and it's going to help the next season even be, even be better. Yeah, I agree. And also I do want to ask Chantal, you're going to be like, what the hell are you about to ask? But I wanted to ask you guys for advice, our listeners, because we did mention that Chantal has been getting like anxiety and um, like kind of like very minor panic attacks from um, like, just like, wedding process and she's never gotten this before but she's like someone who's like let me figure out like the problem because I'm not gonna like sit on this and have this for my life like not throwing Chantel under the bus with that um but some of you guys actually like messaged us and were like you know giving Chantel like some advice and I thought that was great and I 
want advice because even when I was like watching Jen's scene like with the like with this boy I just thought about what happened to me this past weekend and I told Chantel and Chantel like I feel like tried to give me advice but it was like "Mm, I don't know oh Um, (laughs) I know but it was like you guys so I was at um I went I told you guys I went to up north this past weekend and we were at like this really really nice resort it's like a beautiful resort um and my kids are three and four and then this man walks in the hot tub and because I really want advice because I swear to God, I was up all last, like, even though I was thinking about the submarine thing last night, this was on my mind last night where I was like randomly crying again about it. I had called Chantel while I was there crying too, but no, okay. This is so, super sad. Mm-hmm. And it was, I know. Gone. So there was, um, I want to like make sure I'm like saying this in a correct way. Cause like, I don't want anyone to like twist what I'm saying about this at all. But so we were in the hot tub and my daughter's three and, um, I have a four-year-old and they're, they're like newly three and four. So, uh, this guy walks in the hot tub and, um, he has down syndrome and I've never been put in this experience. And my three-year-old looks and she looks at him and he has goggles like two. And she was like, uh, my, my daughter, like in front of him and his mom was there as well, sitting right next to me. And my daughter looks at him, my three-year-old, and she's like, why does he look like that? And my heart sank because I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe like my daughter just said that. Like, w- you know, again, she's three years old. Like she's, you know, she's never seen someone with Down syndrome. It's not like we've talked about it, you know? Um, and then my, and I was like, oh, I was like, what do you mean? Like his goggles? I know you want goggles. I didn't even know what to say. And then my four-year-old, you guys, walks right after, and then she asked the same thing. I I would have pulled her hair. I'm just kidding. I almost (laughs) died. I literally almost died. And they didn't, they were just like, because they're saying it in front of this man and he's not reacting. He's not saying anything. He'll go like the sweetest guy. And I was like, I was like, what do you mean? I was like, I didn't even know what to say. So the mom is right there and she's like smiling. She's not saying anything. And then, um, I look at her and I'm like, I am so sorry. Like, I am so sorry. They don't know. And I start, you guys, I started crying to this lady and I was like, Oh my gosh, I start crying. (laughs) And I was like, what the hell's wrong with me? My husband is with Jack, like 10 feet behind and he's watching this whole thing. And, um, I look at her and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like I, I I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. I'm so sorry that they're asking that right in front of him. And I'm like whispering it to her. And I was like, you know, um, I was like, if you can give me advice on like how to respond to that, to tell them, like, I really don't know. And I'm so sorry. And I just start crying. And I felt like a fool because here I am crying when, you know, this, this woman probably like, you know, her life isn't like my life, you know, like she ends up telling me that her son is 56 years old. I had no idea. She said that he did not look 56. He looks so young. And she said he was 56 years old. And so, and she looked like she was in her, you know, about 80 years old. And so she's like, me and my husband bring him here. And I just like thought about like this woman, just probably her whole life, like hearing this and him hearing it, you know, from like little kids or just like growing up. And I was like to her, like, how would you want me to t- tell them to respond? And she's like, you know, just everyone's different. And he just looks different. And she's like, they'll learn in school. They'll learn like through school, through special ed classes. And I was just crying and I just felt like the biggest fool ever. And I, I know like we got in the car after and my husband was like, oh, like, I hated seeing you like that. That was really uncomfortable. I didn't even know like what to say. And then we were just like telling our kids, like, if you see someone who looks different, you don't say that everyone's different. Like God makes everyone different. And I just want to know what to say because I literally like last night, as well as the submarine thing, I could not stop thinking about that woman's life and that like, you know, I'm sure that's not what she envisioned her life to be at 80 years old. And then he's like 56 and, you know, people still saying this. And like, for me, I'm the most sensitive mom ever that I can't even imagine that. So I know this is so random, but I don't know why, like when I was thinking of Jen's story with her like son and, you know, like, like his path and what it could have been and whatever, I just thought about that. And I was like, I'm going to ask our listeners about this because I don't know, you know, if you guys have older kids or whatever, if you guys been in that situation and ask someone, or if it was like appropriate for me to ask, I, I felt very embarrassed that I asked and that I was crying 
Uh, it was, yeah. <laughs> I, know. I think, I think what you told your kids is 100% accurate. Like I think the way you explained it to them it, at their age is what they needed to hear. And I think you, you kind of broke the ice with the mom. Like you made it seem like, I'm so sorry, but I don't know. I mean, you, you clearly was like your raw emotion that you were crying. And, um, at least you weren't being like a brat, like you weren't being like, I don't yeah, but know, it's like, like I don't want like why am I crying like you know yeah, like, look at the life that she lived yeah like, it wasn't you know? your yeah exactly but it's not it's not like you guys are having this multiple conversations and you keep making it about you like you, that was your instant reaction and right. like you felt so bad and like that right. was your raw emotion yeah. in that moment you know like if you if you then kept seeing her the next day and you kept talking about you then that's an issue but no no yeah not at yeah. all like I was just so like sad that like I just thought about and even in the car ride home when the kids were like sleeping I was like literally crying to my husband again I was just like, I just know moms are so strong and you know you, yeah you love your kid unconditionally no matter what so to her it's like when she sees her son like as much as she has to hear from other people on the outside like to her it's like the same way you love your kids like I'm sure that's the way how she looks at hers and you know she just has to hear it more than my kids you know. are the sweetest kids ever so I don't want it to look like my kids like my kids are so sweet so nice and I think for them, it was like, I feel like I don't want to look like I'm throwing my kids under the bus or anything, you know? Because they're so like, listen, sweet listen, you so two. Nice. Next time you think something, you come and tell me, you don't say it. Right. Out. I know. I was, I just didn't expect that. And then one after the other, the other one comes in the hot tub and says it. And I'm like, oh my God. Am I like, at least my four year old. It's such a like, good, le- it's such a good learning experience right. for them and for you guys to teach them too. So I think if you just left it alone and you made it like it was nothing and you, you just like let it be, like that's, I think that was like a bad moment for you as a parent but I think you guys both addressed it to yeah. them, which is good. And Charlie did in the car say like, okay, like, I, like she understands more. She's like, God makes everyone differently. And I was just like, yeah, exactly. Like there's nothing wrong. It just makes everyone differently. And you know, and I don't know. So yeah, I was definitely looking for, cause all she had told me was like, they're going to learn in school. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. But like, what do we do in this situation? I never want to make a mom feel a type of way. And I'm a sensitive mom and I just like, can't imagine. So I, you know, that, I don't know. So I just had to bring that up. I was like, I was like debating asking. Cause I'm like, again, I don't want to offend anyone at all, but I was like, whatever. Cause I am, I'm still learning every day. So I, I want to like learn about these type of things. But yeah. Yeah. No, I know. You guys give great advice. I know you do. You guys really do. You guys were even giving me advice about what to take for my virus. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate that. And you guys were asking about the Big Mac recipe that Jacob, my husband and I did and Chantel shared it. So thanks Chantel for sharing. Yeah. You're like, did, you're like, did someone ask? I was like, no, I promised a couple of people asked in the DMs. They're like, can you share the recipe? And I was like, yeah, yeah, let me just share it on that thing. I know. But yeah. So, I mean, we're going to continue to cover Orange County. Let us know what else you yeah, guys we'll do want more us of a to recap. cover. And we're going to start covering more hot topics in depth, uh, because especially because with New Jersey gone and stuff. Um, yeah, you guys, I think people loved your last episode, I think, because it was more not just like about an episode. Uh, yeah. Like, like an actual like episode. Know. Yeah. And yeah. people like love that. It's like they love Investigator. They love that. Yeah, and I think rocks. we should start doing like deep dives. So if you guys like want us to deep dive something, but like be more neutral about it, we can do that as well. But nah, that, I'm just kidding. Oh, be, <laughs> I'm kidding right, about being be neutral. neutral. Like, nah. <laughs> dying. Uh, yeah, but that's all for today. So thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks for the great feedback on the last episode. Please subscribe to us on YouTube at All About TRH Podcast. Leave a review the way you guys can leave a review. It's only on Apple Podcasts where you just go to our episodes, go all the way down, write a nice review. If you have feedback, still give us five stars. Because, yeah, on, you know, on Spotify too, you can just give five stars, which is yeah. always nice. And you can always respond to like an actual episode and let us know what you felt about that episode, but it doesn't show right like, to other people. We can, but we can see it. Exactly. Well, bye guys. Bye guys. Be sure to check out all about trh.com for everything Royal Housewives and Bravo TV. And please make sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at all about trh podcast.